This is yet another example of American attempts to extend their destructive influence to all regions of the world. With the complete indulgence of its willless satellites in Europe, Washington is setting itself the task of cutting off our friends and neighbors from cooperation with Russia. We see how persistently the NATO members seek to promote their approaches to regional issues. And let us recall that such initiative, in quotation marks, of the alliance has repeatedly led to disastrous results. It is worth recalling the Balkans, Afghanistan, Libya, and Iraq. Such experience of destroying statehood in the South Caucasus, as well as nowhere else in the world, is not in demand, I assure you. The invitations to the aforementioned summit of a vast circle of close alleged partners of the alliance are intended to demonstrate maximum support for NATO in the jubilee year of the organization. At the same time, the Westerners hope to do what they failed to do at the so-called Peace Conference in Bergenstock, to show clearly how their aggressive policy is allegedly approved by countries outside the Euro-Atlantic region. The United States and its European accomplices are simply dissatisfied with what is happening in Ukraine. They have failed to inflict a strategic defeat on Russia, nor can they influence the course of hostilities, the advance of the Russian armed forces along the entire front line. Human casualties and destruction in Europe are not enough for them. NATO needs to sow chaos in other neighboring countries. The purpose of such actions, as 75 years ago, is to prevent our country from developing and building relationships with partners on the basis of mutual consideration of each other's interests. This is especially clear from the example of Armenia. This republic is being flooded with weapons, trying to rebuild its defense sector and undermine the existing collective security mechanisms within the CSTO. We note that at the same time, NATO emissaries also make their visits to Baku. This aggravates tension between the two republics, does not contribute to the Armenian-Azerbaijani dialogue and provokes an arms race in the region. As far as the South Caucasus is concerned, it should be recalled that the universal basis for the normalization of relations between Baku and Yerevan remains. A set of trilateral agreements of the leaders of Russia, Azerbaijan and Armenia, 2020-2022. We are convinced that stability and security in the South Caucasus can and should be ensured by the countries of the region themselves within the framework of the principle of regional responsibility. The imposition of their own recipes by the Euro-Atlanticists we trust that Baku and Yerevan understand this well, and we believe that this is well understood by those in Baku and Yerevan, and will lead to the emergence of new dividing lines in the South Caucasus, and will have devastating consequences, not only for this region, but also for pan-Eurasian security as a whole. We trust that this is well understood in Baku and Yerevan.